Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our first digital marketing webinar for 2017. My name is Owen Joyce, and I look after digital marketing and careers team here, the careers team here at Ascent Learning. We're excited about today's webinar, which is going to be presented by Moby Sadiq from Red Pandas, who I'll introduce in just a few moments. Before that, I'd like to make a few comments about the field of digital marketing. Most of you will have had, have already seen how social media has completely shifted the way business businesses market and find customers. Everything now is a two-way conversation and it's so easy to find information that companies and their sales teams are finding it harder to have physical conversations now. Think about it, how much more time you spend texting, Facebook messaging or WhatsApping your friends these days rather than talking to them on the phone. Any company that has used digital marketing to generate business will have experienced the pain of a badly executed campaign. Our aim today is to give you some strategies and ideas to avoid that pain. The presentation itself will go for around 30 minutes, although my friend Moby here does love to talk about digital marketing, uh, so it could go, go for a little bit longer. At the end, there'll be some time for questions, which you can type into the bottom right-hand corner check box of your screen. Right at the end, I'll also finish with a gentle reminder for our digital marketing diploma students regarding the exam process. So now let me introduce you to Moby. Moby is a true digital marketing professional and understands this stuff better than anyone I've ever met. Moby runs his own digital marketing agency called Red Pandas, and as well as being a great strategic thinker, he's a tactician who knows how to get the job done. Above all, Moby is a genuinely great guy who loves educating others and helping them to, to be successful. So today, you're all in a very safe pair of hands. Moby, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Owen. Thank you for that lovely intro, and a big welcome to everyone who's tuned in. Thank you for giving up your lunches if you're coming in on city time. Um, so, yes, yeah, we'll just get straight into it. So for the first thing we're going to talk about today is the modern consumer buyer. So what are your prospects? What are your customers? Like how are they actually buying and making decisions in 2017? And then also some actionable takeaway uh, takeaways for you guys to implement in your own businesses and your career. Then we're actually going to talk about you, your career. So what is the growth looking like? You know, what are the key skills that you need? What are the different areas of digital marketing or marketing? And then finally, we'll talk about your digital marketing roadmap for marketing mastery. So in terms of what you need to learn, what your options are, the free options, the paid options, the way I like to learn. And then we'll seal that with a couple of question and answers. So during this uh, actual webinar, I'll go through the presentation itself. Um, uh, Owen will be monitoring any sort of you know issues or questions or anything like that. So feel free to use the chat pane. And if you think of anything, chances are someone else is speaking that too. So don't be shy. Drop that into the chat pane and we'll answer that at the end. Cool. So just a little bit about the person in front of you. For those of you who do not know me, um, I'm the co-founder and the head of strategy of my own digital marketing agency called Red Pandas. And essentially, it's our job to um, you know, meet with clients, understand what their business objectives are, their marketing challenges are, and then develop actionable roadmaps or actionable strategies for them. And how we actually do that is we you know, have a workshop, we understand what is it that you're trying to achieve, what your competitors are doing, what your value proposition is, and we create strategies that help you reach engage and convert more people. The other thing I'm known for is my podcast, Inbound Buzz. We've been running for about a year. We hit 50 episodes uh, the other week. So if you want a, a swag of a load of free information, definitely tune into that one. You can find it on iTunes. A lot of great stuff there and people I've interviewed who are infinitely smarter than me. So check that out. And I also like educating as well. So whether it's on stage or I, I particularly love um, guest lecturing at universities, it's uh, another thing I'm quite keen on. All right, let's kick straight into it, right? Let's let's talk about the actual um, the landscape that we're operating in. So, whether you're ready or not, the way people respond to marketing has completely changed. It's it's no no longer the way it used to be. And in fact, the traditional marketing playbook is actually broken. A lot of the stuff that you know uh, un until recently, a lot of the stuff taught at universities, a lot of the above the line stuff, simply just doesn't work anymore. So. 86% of people skip TV ads. 91% of people unsubscribe from emails. 44% of email, direct mail is never open, sorry. And 10 million people, 10 million Aussies are all on the do not call list. So what actually happened? What actually broke? Well, there are a couple of key reasons. Um, the first is the abundance of media, our mistrust with advertising, and access to technology and therefore information. So just to kind of break that down, what that actually means. The average person today is exposed to 
roughly 300 to 700 marketing messages now every single day. Another really interesting one is ad blocking grew by 41% over the last uh, over the last previous 12 months, according to a study done by PageFair in 2015. And 76% of people say ads are very exaggerated or somewhat exaggerated. So we've got a big task on our hands as marketers, as business owners. Um, there's been a huge change in the dynamic. So before the internet, salespeople held the power. You know, you would go, for instance, if you're looking to buy a car, um, they were the repository of knowledge. We would go with them. Sure, we, you know, there was websites and yellow pages and above the line media, but they actually held the power. What's actually shifted is those little Pavlovian boxes in your pocket that make you pull them out even when your battery is dead. They've given the consumer all the power. Now the consumer has all the power. And for us, that is quite important because for us that means we need to actually consider how people are making decisions how they actually get to that point of purchase so for instance 60 percent of a buyer's decision is made before someone even talks to a salesperson so as, as organizations and i speak to many hundreds of businesses every single year we like to think look if we can just simply get someone in the door our salespeople can do the job but that's actually not the case by the time they've actually spoken to you they've already made 60 percent of their decision making process so what does that actually mean well that means if they've already made that decision you need to own that buyer's journey that's 60% of it or whatever it is, wherever they're kind of researching in their buyer's phase, it behoves us now as marketers to own that buyer's journey. And that's where inbound marketing kicks in. So, you know, a theoretical definition aside, the whole pure job of inbound marketing is to create educational content for that buyer's journey. You know, whether they first realize they have a problem, they're considering alternatives, or now they're ready to buy. And essentially it pulls people towards your assets. So that could be your website, but it could be your social media as well, where they can actually learn more about how they solve their problem. And then by definition, you are that thought leader. Now, in, by the way of tactics, what tactics does that actually include? So this webinar, this is a perfect example of inbound marketing. Um, SEO, social media, uh, podcasting, you know, something that I do a fair bit of, uh, blogs, online video. Now you might say, okay, but what's the difference? These are just tactics you've wrapped together. The difference is it's, it's a bit of a methodology slash mindset. These are all inbound marketing tactics if you've looked at that buyer's journey. So understanding, for instance, what is that person doing? So for, if I consider inbound marketing, right, if you look at the buyer's journey, by the time someone actually wants to engage with me, they don't just say, oh, I need an inbound marketing agency. They might actually be, they might just come across the term inbound marketing and type into Google, what is inbound marketing? So I need to be at that level when they're at that awareness stage. Then they might get to this a stage where they're looking at different inbound marketing softwares, you know, more middle or funnel stuff. Then they might get to the point where they're actually looking inbound marketing agency sydney or whatever it is so they're quite close to the point of purchase so these tactics need to talk to that buyer's journey and your personas whoever they may be now does it work that's the million dollar question because obviously we're not a, a library just here to give away free information to our prospects right well it actually does you in fact can generate 54 percent more leads by inbound marketing according uh, as opposed to traditional paid marketing and Here's the kicker, they are 61% cheaper. So not only will your leads be 61% cheaper, you can generate 54% more. Now these stats are from HubSpot, um, you know, we're affiliated with HubSpot a fair bit, and you know, disclaimer, uh, we're actually HubSpot partners as well, but there's a lot of stats out there and these are great for um, trying to sell the business case for inbound marketing. Now, let's get straight into some insights and some recommendations about the way people actually purchase and make decisions in 2017. The first insight I have for you is the consumer expects value before the point of purchase. So I've just I've just got a nod from Owen. I understand the slides are maybe five seconds delayed, so I'll slow them down. But yeah, just to revisit that on your screen now, you should see insight number one. That is the consumer expects value before the point of purchase. So you know, back in the day, and this is actually, this is from a study where they looked at the way people buy today versus 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, people were happy to pay first and then get value. But that's all changed because businesses have kind of destroyed that. So when you consider the iconic in Australia, um, you can buy, you know, five pairs of shoes if you want and return the four that you don't want. Dropbox, a software as a service provider, 
you can use a terabyte of their information before you actually need to pay. And this one I really like, Ultimate Caravans. They're a uh, off-road uh, camper company in Australia. They've got something crazy like you can actually use one of their campers for a month or, or you know 10,000 kilometers, whatever it is, before you decide to purchase it. Warby Parker, an uh, American example, where they will send you five pairs of glasses and you pick the ones you want and you send them back. So you might sort of say, okay, but what does that mean for me? Like I'm a B2B customer. Well, value doesn't have to be in the form of product. It can be in the form of content as well. So the implication for you guys is can you give your prospects a taste, be it via trials, be it via content, be it via resources, um, white papers, whatever it is. That's the takeaway there. The second insight and potentially one of my favorites of today is people don't read, they watch. And one of the things that we've been talking to all of our clients about um, on this circuit, I had the fortune of uh, going to Boston last year where I saw some of the world's greatest digital marketing minds. Everyone is singing the same tune. 50% of your content marketing uh, in 2017 needs to be video. That's 50%. So be that via a the screenshot there is a Facebook live show that I run with a friend of mine or it's um, you know high quality videos or even low quality videos and that brings me to my next point people don't expect high quality high production anymore that was 10 years ago they prefer authentic and increasingly live videos so a screenshot you can see there is a is a show we did for kids club it's a Facebook live video and you know we're very honest about it. You don't need to be an actor. You don't need, you know, amazing training. You just have to be authentic and transparent. And the great thing about live video is people accept, you know, the video is going to have kinks, might have dropouts. Hopefully we don't have any dropouts here. People might drop their notes or whatever. And, you know, you just kind of laugh it off. Now, the example I have on the right-hand side, and I love this one, and this is one that marketers have been using in the B2B space for about 10 years now, and it's a video by Sacri, How to Make a Concrete Slab with Sacri. This has had 1.2, almost 1.3 million views. All it is is a guy filming another guy pouring concrete. I mean, it, it, it's incredible, right? It's not even high production, it's not even high quality. I mean, you still got the letterboxing on the left and the right hand side, but the point is you just have to put it out there. And if anything, sometimes authentic videos can do a lot better than you know high production videos. The next key thing is um, the way people actually consume videos. So most videos online these days are actually watched without sound. In fact, on Facebook, 85% of videos are viewed without sound. So it's quite funny because it's it's like we've actually returned to the silent, silent era of video. You know, you had those um, silent videos back in the day. We've returned to that. So in terms of the implication, for me, it's, it's a fairly simple one. Just do video. In fact, I'm in the middle of writing a blog post at the moment where we're talking about how to create a um, how to create a video setup for less than $200. Now, how I've done this in the past, I've seen video shot on an iPhone that have sold millions of dollars worth of products or services. So as long as you have great light, if you have an iPhone and a tripod, um, really, that's all you need. I'm not saying there's not a place for high production, but I'm saying you need to mix that with your high production videos as well and just get on and start doing it. The third insight that I have is the uh, sales team, your sales reps, now augment your website. There's been a big shift the way people use websites. So I've got the, the screenshot at the moment, hopefully you guys see that, where in 2006, I've got a, an example of HubSpot page. It was really kind of channeling, channeling to people towards speaking to sales reps. And I mean, unfortunately, a lot of companies still operate like this, but I remember back in those days, people were like, oh, don't put up your price list. Uh, don't put up too much information. You know, just you know, put more information and channel them to the sales reps. Well, it's actually shifted. You know, your sales rep now augment your website that's why in the screenshot on the right you've got things like you know, live chat or uh, knowledge bases as much information as possible as you can give people um, prices if that's something you're you're able to talk about so the implication for you is think about the way people now operate and want to consume information people want things personalized now you know things like uber have just kind of destroyed everyone they've just conditioned everyone to be you know want things now and personalized and fast so they want things personalized. How can you give them a personalization experience on your website? 
They want things automated. They want things self-service. And increasingly, they want it now. That's why when live chat started making waves a few years ago, people like, you know, they won't use it. But we were adamant that people would use it because it's the path to least resistance. It's the path that people um, can take to get an answer right away. So they are going to take it. Now, the implication for you there is I often, I've done this exercise in the past where I've asked people, what are the top 10 questions people ask you about your product category? Or another variant of that I'll often say is to think about the 10 reasons why someone won't purchase from you. Not 10 reasons why they should purchase from you because chances are you're, you're probably talking about some of these things. But tell me the top 10 questions people, uh, sorry, the top 10 reasons people won't, will not buy from you. And then I ask, how many of those are addressed on your website? And more often than not, there might be two or three max tops. So if people are thinking about that and they're researching that, and by the time they speak to you, they've made 60% of their decision-making process, you need to be there for that buyer's journey. So ask yourselves, what are the questions, the 80% of the questions that people ask all the time, are they on your website? And reasons why they will not purchase from you. And then figure out whether they are on your website and get them onto your website. That's the implication there. Now, this part is more around you guys, right? So, cool. We've spoken a little bit about the way people buy today, the way people consume today, the role of inbound marketing and how it really has trumped um, as the most effective form of reaching your consumer compared to outbound marketing. Now, on a, just on a quick note before I go on, we're not suggesting you don't do paid ads anymore. Do paid ads. By all means, do paid ads. Even HubSpot and a lot of inbound marketers uh, up until, I guess, last year, year before, um, they weren't really talking about paid. But even now, they have acknowledged you still need to do paid ads. But the idea is being at every single stage of the decision-making process. Do you want to be bidding for words that might be $20 a click? Or do you want to capture your prospects and your audience before they even realize that they're looking for your product or service category? So I just want to qualify that there. So now let's talk about your actual career, right? What does that mean for your career in digital marketing? Now, it's quite interesting because there often isn't a linear digital career progression for most people, and it definitely wasn't the case for me. Myself, like a lot of you guys, like a lot of people who I speak to, fell into digital marketing. I come from a traditional marketing strategy background where we you know, created marketing, 20-page marketing plans and SWOT analysis and all that sort of stuff. And I fell into a website project. And from there, my love for, for digital and then inbound marketing kind of grew. Um, but back then, and even until a couple of years ago, even in the, uh, universities, they didn't really teach this quite well. It's only been quite recently um, where, you know, Great brands like Ascent Learning now offer digital marketing diplomas where you it's actually created or uh, authenticated by people from Microsoft and Google and, and you know, Facebook and um, HubSpot and the like. So this has only been quite recent. So a lot of people find they, they haven't had that little career path. Now, in terms of the digital career paths that you have, I kind of, I've broken them down into five key areas. Now, you know, 10 years ago, there was, you know, just digital marketing and now you've got experts just in social. So if you're, if you love that social media side of things, then there are careers and, and parts for people who are purely, uh, deal with social media. For a lot of people, um, in-house careers are the way to go. And, and a lot of the guys, um, on this pot and on this webinar today, are in in-house roles. So for instance, if you're in a marketing role and you've kind of just fallen into digital, even if you haven't, I mean, really, we shouldn't even call it digital marketing anymore. It is marketing. Um, that is a path you can take. Or digital specific roles. So whether it's a digital marketing specialist role or digital marketing coordinator role or a digital marketing manager role, that's definitely a career path that you can take. On the agency side, um, you there's a number of different ways you can take as well. And the other thing you need to think about is your personality. Like, where, how are you inclined? You know, what do you like doing? So, for instance, if you're a real people person and you love solving problems and you and you love speaking to people, then maybe an account manager role is something for you. And often, the the progression of account manager could be a junior account manager, account manager, senior account manager, so on and so forth. There's a lot of different titles out there. Um, or a producer. Maybe you just like doing the stuff. You like getting taking those campaigns from the account managers and just like putting your head down and grunting and actually doing the work. So you, you, you've got to think about your strengths as well. Or strategists. So my background, I'm the head of strategy at Red Pandas. My background has always been last couple of roles as a strategist. So the idea of actually taking a business's problems and understanding that they're not actually 
maybe, you know, say they need SEO. It's like, no, that might be a symptom. What are they trying to achieve? What's the objective? And then coming up with those strategies. Content marketing itself has ballooned into its own area. And there are a lot of content marketing agencies out there. And this is particularly a great avenue for people who like to create things, right? So if you like writing or you like producing, whether it's videos or infographics or whatever, um, this is particularly good for those people who are creative and have, you know, maybe a writing bone or a video bone in their body. That's definitely a good path as well. Even on the more technical side is uh, search engine marketing or SEM. So on the AdWords side of things, like I said before, AdWords, it's not going away anywhere. If anything, it's going to increase in the next five to 10 years. On the AdWords side is, I mean, this is great for people who love numbers, who love keywords, who love just going into the, um, the platform of AdWords or if there's another platform that uh, connects to AdWords, and checking out keywords, adding keywords, looking for the volume of what people are searching for. It's real techie stuff, right? Um, or search. Now, search is a really, really interesting one, or SEO. SEO used to be more of a science, and today it's more of an art form. So content marketing, in a big way, forms part of SEO. So SEO isn't just for those technical people anymore. It's for people, yes, who understand how keyword research works, who understand how to use um, keyword volume tools, but also understand the role of content marketing. Now, if you're an inbound marketer and you understand the buyer's journey, then you also are a better SEO marketer in my mind because you know those terms that they're looking for. Now, I now want to talk about some of the top key digital marketing responsibilities because once you actually know what those responsibilities are, then you can build a learning roadmap. There's no point sort of just trying to learn everything and then trying to pick, figure it out from there. So, for instance, you know, we may have the chief marketing officer on board, and if we do, hello. But you know, that maybe that is an area that a lot of the in-house marketers want to aspire to. And I firmly believe the digital marketing managers of today are quickly becoming the CMOs of tomorrow. In terms of the content marketing side, you know, what are the skills? What are the responsibilities you need there? So I spoke a little bit about this before. You know, creating stuff, and this is particularly great for people who want to either be thought leaders or help their clients be thought leaders. And yes, you have to be quite strategic as well. But one thing that's often overlooked is you have to know how to manage teams. You have to know how to manage processes. On the content marketing side, you have to, particularly if you're on the, say you're working for an agency, you have to understand what the brief of the client is. You have to translate that into something that the writers will write or maybe you're a writer yourself and you need to get that back in a timely manner. So working with different stakeholders, whether it's the SEO team um, or the marketing team, the, the, the process side and the project management side, in my opinion, cannot be underestimated or overstated. On the digital marketing side, just as a generalist, I guess, skill set, if you're a digital marketing, if you're aspiring to be a digital marketer or a digital marketing manager, or even on the marketing side, 50% of your time often may be taken up in campaigns. So whether it's an email marketing campaign or a local area marketing campaign or whatever it is, churning out those campaigns. So again, you have to um, get your head around those and understanding a lot of the software that comes with it. So whether it's, I mean, MailChimp is just the entry level of email marketing really, but whether it's a you know, Salesforce or a Marketo or a HubSpot, or Eloqua, understanding those platforms and knowing how to run campaigns will be crucial to your role. And because it's a generalist type of role, you need to understand paid search. So getting an AdWords certification is something I highly recommend a digital marketer to put into their roadmap. And AdWords certifications are free. Then there's also email marketing, which we touched on before, um, landing pages as well. And this you'll notice for uh, three or four of them, landing pages actually appears because if you're running campaigns, you need to send people to landing pages and you have to develop the skill set to understand, okay, where do I put my copy? How much copy do I put? Where do I put the video? Where do I put the form? What should the call to action button be? So, and even understanding the platforms behind landing pages. So, you know, you, a lot of these marketing automation suites will have landing page software or landing page modules, but then there's things like Unbounce, which is a really great one for landing pages. Then the inbound side, right? The inbound side, yes, it's got some of the areas we spoke about, but the key one here is automation. So as an inbound marketer, you need to understand marketing automation, um, whether it's, again, you know, Salesforce, Marketo, HubSpot, 
one of those and the, the power of that and again you know i could probably talk about two hours about marketing automation alone but the idea is you need to if you have marketing automation installed you have full vis visibility behind your prospects so once you have an email address of someone if you've captured the email address you know that they've come back three times on your website you know that they visited your pricing page and then you can automate some really really powerful stuff so imagine you could send out an email someone visits your pricing page three times in the last week and has spent 10 minutes on your website, send them an automated email that says, hey, by the way, I've got a 50% off special if you act before the end of the week, whatever it is. And if you've got that set up, if you've got that set up well, then you don't need to uh, do that. You could be in Bali and you don't have any problems. We spoke a little bit about the SEM side. And of course, th that, that includes not only Google, but also Facebook ads now, which are quite powerful. Um, the SEO side, understanding the best practices, link building, uh, you know, off page, on page. It's, it's like I said, it's not as technical as it used to be, but again, you do have to have a bit of a technical mind there. And then the social media side. Now, this is a section I've called my difficulty marketing words of wisdom. And this is stuff that I've just kind of learned and picked up from myself and speaking to a lot of practitioners out there. And this is skills and I guess recommendations for you guys personally. The first one is don't chase shiny objects, be strategic. The biggest problem I find with digital marketing is you have things like, you know, VR comes about, you know, virtual reality or Snapchat. And marketers are like, oh my God, how do I get my head around this Snapchat thing? How do I use this Snapchat thing? Or, you know, there's a, an expert who's talking about it. What am I supposed to do with you know, Facebook stories now? Well, at the end of the day, you have to be quite strategic. So if you understand how to do, and I'll give you, I'll share some resources in a moment. If you understand, okay, what are we actually trying to achieve? So, so for example, Posts that are viral are often not the ones that actually convert customers because viral posts often might be in top of funnel awareness type stuff, you know, it might be interest based stuff, might be funny stuff. But the stuff that converts people might be, say, you know, HubSpot versus MailChimp or something like that. People aren't really going to share that. So think about what the objective is. Now, this one's kind of linked to the first one, but remember you're being hired to solve a problem. Whether you're stepping into an interview, and I love the interview. I love the interview example for this particular point. Understand that a lot of roles, people are backfilling for a problem. So you can often get that from the job ad, but often these job ads are quite templated, as you guys know. So even just asking, what 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 is the biggest marketing challenge you have, or what's the biggest digital marketing challenge you guys are trying to solve? Um, you might actually stump a lot of people asking that because it shows you are trying to solve a problem or often jumping to their website, being obviously quite respectful, don't sh uh, share it to uh, tear it to shreds, but understanding what are the issues there. The third one is, and this is crucial, this is a, I implore you guys to follow this one, you need to build your own brand, particularly if you're a marketer or a digital marketer in 2017. Be active on LinkedIn as a minimum. So I've shared here, I had the good fortune of meeting three or four people from LinkedIn yesterday. Uh, sorry, not yesterday, last year, and they shared this playbook for me. So if you go to bit.ly, bit, uh, so that's bit.ly forward slash LinkedIn profile playbook, that link should be on your screen and it will be in the slides. Um, there's an actual, oh, I think it's four or five page playbook that says, okay, this is how you optimize your LinkedIn. And then be active on it. The fourth one is have a learning plan. So the great thing about having my podcast is I can actually, I actually speak to, like I said, people who are infinitely smarter than me. And if there's one common thread that I found with them is they have a learning plan. So I interviewed Kip Bodner, uh, the CMO of HubSpot last year. And this gentleman spends an hour and a half every single morning reading. And he's the CMO. He doesn't have to do that. Uh, another guy we interviewed for our latest episode, Jeff Bullis, who's the number one digital marketing uh, influencer in the world, not just Australia. He used to write from 4.30 in the morning to 9 o'clock every single day before he went to his day job. Now, I'm not saying you need to spend four hours every day writing, but you need to have a learning plan. So a, a course, if you're if you're coming into this quite new, or if, you, if you've been doing it for a year, a, a couple of years, and you want to be have a holistic understanding, a digital marketing diploma, um, particularly the good ones like the ones from DMI, are a very good way to kind of get into it. But then you need to have continuous learning as well. Now, the thing is you need to learn the way you're inclined to learn, the way you're built to learn. So me, because I can talk underwater, a podcast is great for me, not only to uh, communicate with the world, but that's the way I consume information as well. Um, but in terms of books, uh, the, the gentleman I mentioned before, he's got this book called Blogging the Smart Way. And 
for goodness sakes, it's about 10 bucks. So if you want to know how to master blogging and how to write, um, blogging is not dead in 2017. It's still got a long way to go. Check out his book. Um, the other one, if I was to vote for one book, my favorite book, the the Bible of marketing, so to speak, would be The New Rules of Marketing and PR by David Neiman Scott. And again, if you're more audio inclined, I've interviewed him last year as well. So check that out. Now, in terms of blogs and resources, Often people ask me, like, how do I get into doing what you're doing, Moby? And I'll often say, look, if there's one resource I could give you, it would be Smart Insights by Dave Chaffee. So this is a website where you can go. There's a lot of plans, a lot of templates. Um, they've got great frameworks and, you know, things like understanding that as a business, you can't just jump from, you know, not doing anything to best practice. There is a maturity model. And uh, on his website, Smart Insights, he talks about what this maturity model is, understanding where you are and how to work to the next stage. Social Media Examiner is a great one to stay up to date in terms of all the latest Facebook algorithms and Instagram changes and everything in the world of social media. A great one run by Michael Stelzner that you should check out. And then there's Moz. So Moz, they're behemoths in the SEO world. They've got a great blog, but they've also got a really good uh, video series called Whiteboard Friday where um, they'll talk about whether it's SEO or even content marketing, um, a lot of generalist stuff and digital as well. So that's a great one. Now, podcasts, again, if you're like me and you like, I'd probably consume 50% of my knowledge via podcast, definitely check out mine. He's my selfless plug, Inbound Buzz. Um, a good friend of mine, George uh, B. Thomas, uh, who's been doing this for a lot longer than me, he runs a podcast called The Hubcast. He also runs a, uh, he shares that with a gentleman called Marcus Sheridan. There's also another podcast he has called One Last Tool. Um, an Australian one is called Hub Shots. Marketing School by Neil Patel is a fantastic one. And there's a, a range of others, but these are uh, the ones that are definitely in my rotation. So check them out. So um, just before we throw it to uh, Q&A and I ask Owen, about um, if we've had any questions. Um, just wanted to thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for sacrificing your lunch break or part of your lunch break. And this is just uh, the first in a series that we'll be running. Today was more about you know the modern buyer and, and inbound marketing and what you need to do in your career. And a lot of this was, um, I know we have a lot of DMI students tuning in, so this was tailored for learning. But we're gonna have a lot more specific ones around, for instance, how to create a digital marketing strategy strategy content marketing so um yeah definitely check out the websites on screen and i might kick it over to owen to see if we have any questions sure moby thank you very much for that that was uh, as always very educational and uh, very enjoyable and engaging uh, and i'm sure everyone would agree we uh, if anyone out there i believe my intro at the start um didn't come through uh, for some reason not sure why, but if anyone does have any questions and they want to type them into the uh, bottom right-hand corner of the chat screen, uh, please feel free to do so. We do have one question here, which we didn't get to, which is, are there cheaper options than HubSpot in terms of uh, CRM? So um, what uh, what do you think there, Moby? I know you're a, a partner of, of HubSpot, obviously, because you, you, you enjoy that platform. Mm. Um, but you know, from my understanding, there are other um, you know things, like Sugar CRM and uh, Salesforce, which is probably more expensive. Mm. Um, I know from my own experience as well. Um, a lot of times, you buy, you maybe have to, you you might get a cheap uh, solution, but then you've got to bolt a whole bunch of other things on. So whereas HubSpot's got a, a lot sort of in the one package. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a really good one. I mean, although um, yeah, again, I'm a HubSpot partner. It's it's not for everyone. It really isn't. You know, it's, it's good for businesses who are maybe medium sized and up. And look, the the version of HubSpot that actually has any power starts from about a thousand dollars. That's not for everyone. Um, and there's also a, a distinction between marketing automation and CRM. So HubSpot does have a free CRM. So if you're looking for a free CRM, <laughs> HubSpot does have a free CRM. The marketing automation is, you know, the email marketing side and sending those. Um, uh, you can create workflows and all that kind of marketing stuff, but the sales side is free. But back to your question, there are a couple of great up and comers. So, you know, HubSpot was a disruptor five years ago, but people are, are coming to disrupt them as well. And some of these I recommend quite highly. There's one um, called Wishpond, and that's actually quite affordable uh, by a magnitude of maybe 10. Wishpond is a good one. Um, there's another one, it's, I haven't tried this yet, but it's called Mautic, M A U T I C, um, and that's actually free. Right. Um, and the, the model that they're going after is sort of like WordPress. WordPress is free, but they make money through plugins and uh, add-ons like that. So there's there's definitely a lot out there. Um, if you're if you are a medium business and you know 
you can afford a thousand dollars per month and you can justify that then um definitely hubspot is a good one but there's plenty out there that the cost should not be uh should stop you you should get onto something okay great um we had one question come in uh, just over facebook which was uh i have skills but in talking to prospective employers i don't seem to be getting the message across uh anything i can do differently yeah that's that's quite interesting so it's, it's funny that as soon as you said that i thought about one of my uh marketing words of quote unquote wisdom um where remember you're being hired to solve a problem so if you are able to actually you know get to an interview or even you can't get to an interview understand what is that the problem that they actually try and achieve and, and solve for that problem um you know often jumping into their website or looking at their competitors is a great way but if you don't actually have the skills you're not going to know what to look for there's mm -hmm. unknown unknowns you know a lot of people don't know that there's software out there like semrush where you can actually put in your competitors and see how many visitors they're getting so if you know how to do that then you can walk into an interview process and say look what your competitors are doing so for things like that doing a, a, a digital marketing diploma um of, with dmi or even doing some you know small tactical courses online are a great way to get that learning absolutely okay great thanks Bobby. i'll just put a link to the um the digital marketing uh professional diploma up there obviously that is a good way because um you know, if you're being examined by an independent body, it's often a good way to sort of prove that you've, you've put some effort into getting your skills up to date. One more question that we've got. Um, it says, I'm a fan of inbound marketing. However, my company doesn't think it goes far enough to generating leads. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Because, I mean, uh, a lot of people talk about the content side of inbound marketing. We've got to create ebooks and content. And I'll be honest with you, inbound marketing, takes about two to three months to bear fruit. It really does. So that's a great question. How do you actually get buying? Well, firstly, the ROI, we spoke about the ROI. The ROI is markedly higher than traditional means, right? But again, it's gonna take you time. Um, but I, I do love the analogy, if I heard this the other day, I love the analogy of uh, inbound marketing is more of a honeypot, you know? So honeypots attract, you know, uh, people or bears or whatever it is, whereas a fly swatter, the old way of marketing, if you, if you don't swat, you, you're not getting any leads. Mm. Um, the other thing you, you've got to do is, everyone loves knowing what they, their neighbors are doing. So uh, I know HubSpot's got a good case study library. There are a lot of other brands out there that actually have case studies on brands who've actually embarked on inbound marketing and how well it's done for you. Short of that, you do need to take people onto the journey. So whether it's bringing people onto webinars like this or events or whatever it is bringing people onto the journey because and the one comment i'll say is don't be don't take it personally that people of if you're inside the company they don't take that advice yeah. um i've said many many people uh, many clients or marketing managers who i deal with they say moby i've been saying this stuff for years and no one's listening now you're saying it i'm like you know what when i was client side it'd be the same thing mm. so it's it's sometimes you kind of need that external view or buddy to help you out and I guess it is that thing because a lot of uh, business owners and managers are they want immediate results, right? So they sometimes it's a there's a patience. You got, we got to train people to be patient for this uh, to get the results in this. So um, so look, I think uh, we've probably uh, hit our time limit here. Um, Moby, as always, it's um, it's a, a great pleasure to listen to you talk about digital marketing because you clearly love it, and uh, you know we 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 always learn a lot. Um, and also thanks to all of our attendees who have. Um, spent uh, a chunk of their lunch break um, listening uh, listening to uh, what we have to say. Just a little reminder for, for anyone who, if anyone's interested in digital marketing training, so we've got different solutions. One is obviously the digital marketing diploma. We also have in-house face-to-face training, which is actually um, run by our fearless guru here beside me, Moby. And um, that's a great way to sort of get, get some team members together inside your organization and uh, pick a specific topic uh, tailor to your company needs and then uh, and, and then learn some more. Um, if you want to learn about more of these, those things, or in fact, if you want to learn more about Red Pandas and, and their services, you can always ring uh, Michael Gear, uh, who's Ascent Learning. He's our digital specialist here at Ascent Learning, or uh, send him an email. I've put his details uh, in the chat line. And very, very last message for our digital marketing diploma current students. I just want to remind you all, uh, I think most of you would be aware of this anyway. Um, there is, uh, you obviously get six months access to your course, but we do recommend, and DMI do recommend that you book and try to sit your, your exam within the first uh, 10 to 12 weeks. So some of you will be sort of coming up on that relatively soon, but for those of you who started recently, 
Um, the best way to do it is to just jump onto the GMI, uh, the, sorry, the Pearson View website, which I've sent you a link to, and um, we will. Uh, you just type in, uh, sorry, click the find a find a uh, testing center, type in your postcode, and it will it will uh, it will let you go from there. I just uh, noticed there's one question from Steph. Hi, Steph. Um, is it possible to get a recording? Yes. As soon as we finish here today. You'll be sent a link to a recording, and uh, the whole presentation will be there, available for you to listen to again. Um, so, look, that's that's it from us today. I hope you enjoyed the day. Again, Moby, thank you very much, um, and to everyone, look forward to hosting you again in a few weeks' time, and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.